Then a surprising assessment that shows the distance between our political cultures. When I asked about Osama bin Laden's latest audio tape, one of them answered with a question of her own. Who is Osama bin Laden? Who? He's, a, he's just a character created by America. Well, actually, 98% of Pakistan would probably follow along, those, al along mm. the same line. They believe that Osama is basically a CIA agent who is working undercover to uh, put a bad image of Islam. Really? Yeah, so that there is no really, there is no Osama bin Laden? A lot of them find it difficult to believe that such Muslims could actually exist. We could all drive an hour from where we are right now and find many, many people who stand by what Osama bin Laden says in the spirit of Islam. To be quite honest, that's a very marginalized uh, section of Pakistani society. Islam extremism that you find here uh, did, not, did not really exist in Pakistan pre-9-11 or uh, pre the Musharraf government. Really? Yeah. So that there is no really, there is no Osama bin Laden. That Osama is basically a CIA agent who is working undercover to uh, put a bad image of Islam. In an exclusive interview with Newsweek, the CIA field commander in Tora Bora during the invasion, Gary Bernson, broke his silence. He explained that his intelligence operatives had tracked bin Laden to Tora Bora. Mr. Bernstein feels so strongly about getting this story out uh, and getting his book published that he actually resigned two years short of retirement uh, from the CIA in order to publish his book. At the time of this interview, he was required to speak through his attorney until the CIA cleared his book for publication. At various points in time, they did have, uh, to my understanding, definitive intelligence as to his general location within Tora Bora. I can't go into detail as to the actual uh, sources of the intelligence and the collection methods because those remain classified. However, we had Osama bin Laden essentially cornered in Tora Bora and for whatever reasons we did not do what was necessary uh, in order to ensure that he did not escape. Of course we're after Saddam Hussein, I mean uh, bin Laden, he's, 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 he's isolated. He's, a, he's just a character created by America. According to investigative reporter Seymour Hersh, the Bush administration with Saudi Arabia is secretly funding radical Sunni groups, some with ties to Al-Qaeda, to counter Shia groups backed by Iran. A lot of them find it difficult to believe that such Muslims could actually exist. There is also no evidence that bin Laden used the term Al-Qaeda to refer to the name of a group until after September the 11th when he realized that this was the term the Americans well, According to you and another number of analysts, bin Laden has been dead for quite some time already. If that were true, why would the U.S. wait till now to announce his death? Well, first let me uh, correct you. I'm not in uh, New York. I'm actually in Japan. Oh, but um, but uh, it's not my contention that, that Osama bin Laden def def definitively has been dead for some time, but that he has been, his death has been announced a number of times at any rate. And, uh, and I don't see why we should take this, uh, this pronouncement any more seriously than any of the previous pronouncements, especially considering the complete and utter lack of evidence that has so far been produced to show that Osama bin Laden or anyone resembling that description was actually killed yesterday. But I think it's important to understand the announcement that occurred yesterday, not through the lens of the announcement of the death of some terrorist mastermind so much as the uh, retirement party for a known CIA asset along the lines of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald back in November 1963. And I think uh, Lee Harvey Oswald is probably the best analog for Osama bin Laden as someone who did not have the means, motive or opportunity to do what he allegedly did, not only killing President Kennedy, but also waltzing in and out of the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War after having been working at the uh, top secret Atsugi Air Force Base uh, with no questions asked using money that he didn't have at the time. In the same way we see Osama bin Laden being the, the rogue element of the bin Laden family of uh, construction fortune, who of course has deep ties to the oligarchy of Texas and of course the Bush family. So uh, we see uh, Osama bin Laden of course having deep ties to the American intelligence establishment. So I see this more as a ploy of uh, the CIA getting rid of one of their old assets, whether he actually did die yesterday or he's been dead for years or 
whatever the case may be. This is simply uh, discarding a war on terror boogeyman who's no longer scaring the populace. Okay, so you have your point of view about what went on today, and uh, certainly you're entitled to that. But what do you think this will do about the uh, presidential elections coming up? 2012 is around the corner. Do you think that Obama can claim this as a victory leading into a re-election campaign? Uh, there's certainly no doubt that this is going to give a, a market boost to, to Obama as people rally around the flag as they usually do in circumstances like this. So I think this is going to have a, a positive effect in, in that way. And also it, uh, it once again uh, inoculates and endures the public, endures the public, I should say, to uh, the idea of extrajudicial assassinations just days after uh, NATO attempted to assassinate uh, Gaddafi and ended up killing his son and grandchildren. Uh, once again, we see another type of extrajudicial assassination going on, which of course is an international war crime, but uh, in this case it's uh, it's okay because it's the boogeyman that everyone loves to hate, so um, it once again makes it okay in the eyes of the public. So with a person like bin Laden one way or another out of the picture at this point, what do you think is the future of terror? Well, I think at this point, uh, it, it's for anyone who has been paying attention over the last 10 years, it's been quite obvious, but I, I can't see how the, uh, the perpetrators of the war of terror can any longer pretend that terrorism itself is actually some sort of enemy combatant with, uh, that consists of some sort of army led by some sort of shadowy mastermind in a cave in the hills of Afghanistan, so much as it is simply a word that means anything that is opposed to uh, U.S. oligarchical interests. But it's more than just that. I mean, there's terrorists striking Russia right now. There's Doku Umarov doing his uh, his uh, occasional action here. There's terrorism going on in the Middle East. I mean, it's not something that's simply striking the United States or something that's purely instigated by the, the West. No one denies that there are terrorists and there are real terrorist events, but I think the spectacular types of terror events that we've seen, for example, on 9-11 and on 7-7 and uh, certain other uh, terror attacks have been allowed and or puppeteered and or perpetrated by uh, Western intelligence agencies. And I think absolutely Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda narrative has been an important part of that. And when you go back to the 1980s with Afghanistan and the, the roots of Al-Qaeda, you see that o Osama bin Laden was directly supplied by the U.S. who were selling his men arms at a reduced rates. In the 1990s, you have uh, FBI whistleblower Sibel Edmonds testifying that uh, the information that she had at the FBI indicated that bin Laden was working hand in glove with the U.S. intelligence establishment throughout the 19, 1990s. Uh, and uh, you have well, Michael Springman testifying that when he worked at the Jetta consulate in the 1980s, he was giving uh, terrorists to known uh, visas to known terrorists in order to bring them into the U.S. for training at U.S. Uh, military bases. So at every possible opportunity, you see how these uh, these types of organizations are helped along at key junctures by people uh, who have ties to the uh, Western intelligence establishment. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Editor of the Corbett Report, James Corbett. In December 2001, uh, CNN Fox News reported that uh, the Pakistan Observer newspaper had informed that Osama bin Laden had passed away in December 2001 on account of his long history of kidney disease. But then in January 18, 2002, Pakistani President Pervez Musharraf also informed quite bluntly, I think that frankly Osama bin Laden is dead. That was 18th. January 2002. Then the third uh, life of Osama bin Laden is July 17, 2002. The then, then head of counterterrorism of the FBI, Dale Watson, said, I personally think that Osama bin Laden is dead. Fourth life. October 2002, Afghan President Hamid Karzai told CNN, I would come to believe that bin Laden is probably dead. All right. Fifth life, November 2005, Senator Harry Ride of the United States revealed that he had been told that Osama bin Laden apparently died in an earthquake in Pakistan in that year. Fifth life, or sixth life, in September 2006, French intelligence leaked their report suggesting that Osama bin Laden had died in Pakistan. November 2nd, 2007, former Pakistan Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto told Al Jazeera's David Frost that Omar Sheikh had killed Osama bin Laden. March 2009, former U.S. Foreign Intelligence Officer and Professor of International Relations at Boston University, Angelo Codevilla, said, all the evidence suggests that Elvis Presley is more alive than Osama bin Laden. Hmm. May 2009, Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari confirmed 
that his counterpart in the American intelligence agencies hadn't heard anything from Bin Laden in seven years, so he was probably dead. And now, November 2011, President Obama says that American forces have captured Osama Bin Laden in northern Pakistan, and 12 hours later, after shooting him in the head, they threw his body into the ocean. How strange. Wouldn't one expect that at least they would have kept his body to show it to the world press? Or at least to make sure that some specialists can say, yep, this is Osama Bin Laden. No, they just threw him into the ocean. It's going to be very difficult to find him now. And this rings a bell. Do you remember when the World Trade Center collapsed and all the scrap metal, instead of analyzing what is it that brought these two buildings down so terribly? No. All the, the metal, all the beams from the World Trade Center were quickly shipped across the Hudson River into New Jersey. And from New Jersey, they were exported and sold the scrap metal to Taiwan and to South Korea. No forensics, no analysis of any sort. and authorized an operation to get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. Today, at my direction, the United States launched a targeted operation against that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with extraordinary courage and capability. No Americans were harmed. They took care to avoid civilian casualties. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body.